Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all Denarians on the go and in the know. Like, subscribe, and share with your fellow Denarian friends. To help support our channel we now accept tips using the blockchain-based Brave Browser and BAT tokens. It makes a huge difference and is very much appreciated. To those of you that made a contribution, I sincerely thank you very much. If you are interested in making a few extra bucks by using the latest technology, use the blockchain-based Secure Brave Browser. If you have not done so yet, pick up your free trial copy of the Currency Exchange Planner and check out the awesome new Currency Exchange Planner Companion, voted the number one exchange planner in the Dinar community. Both the links to the Brave Browser as well as the Currency Exchange Planner are below this video. First article of interest for today, Member of Parliamentary Finance reveals the date for sending the 2020 budget to Parliament. Member of Parliamentary Finance, Hainan Kadu, revealed on Saturday, February 22, 2020, the date for sending the 2020 budget to the House of Representatives, pointing out that the date of dispatch will be after the vote on the government of the Prime Minister-designate, Mohammed Tawfiq Alawi. Kadu told Baghdad Today that the country's general federal budget bill for 2020 will arrive in the House of Representatives two weeks after the formation of the government of Prime Minister-designate Mohammed Tawfiq Alawi, noting that there is a large deficit in the budget law, which can be addressed with high prices oil. He added that the resigned Prime Minister, Adel Abdul Mahdi, should have sent the budget before submitting his resignation so as not to fall into the pain of the delay, which has seriously disrupted the projects. And Abdul Hussein al Hainan, the adviser to the resigned Prime Minister, Adel Abdul Mahdi, explained on Tuesday, 18 February 2020, the truth of the reports that talked about the delay in approving the budget because of a large deficit in it. The general budget for the current year is almost finalized, and there are some opinions calling for the postponement of sending the law to the House of Representatives until the vote on the new government is completed, Al Hainan said, noting that the decision to postpone in order to make the new government amendments to the paragraphs of the budget. He added, the news that the budget has been delayed due to a large deficit in it are inaccurate and impartial reasons and information. Next article of interest. The Iraqi Economy and the Budget Approval Crisis. Iraq has been experiencing socio-economic political tensions from 2003 until today, but with varying frequency and crises, the most important and most serious of which began last October, from the ongoing street protests that led to the resignation of the Adel Abdul Mahdi government. Where the task of the new government is very difficult, with all the question marks and criticism surrounding it, it constitutes half of the real picture of what is happening in Iraq. What will the future of the economy, and the other half, and most importantly, be the reaction of the demonstrators who are the driving force that shakes the streets of the country? The Iraqi economy today is exhausted and inherited from failed governments, corrupt and weak, controlled by militias, armed groups and religious parties, and the most dangerous Iranian influence in Iraq and its control over the militias affiliated with it against the interest of the country. The formation of the next government will be accompanied by more intense external pressure campaigns than ever before, and this what will lead to the blurring of the future vision and ideas for managing the Iraqi economy. In the chaos that ravages the country, will the new government succeed in building the new Iraq? The general budget has not decided what it means. From a legal point of view, Experts point out that the budget instructions for 2019 cannot be continued until 2020, because the budget law is in effect for a period of one year and has full legal implications, whether at the level of spending or budget implementation, and legal procedures indicate that 2020 should be opened with a new budget law that responds and addresses all the problems that occurred in last year's budget. As the current year budget that was not approved according to the project proposed by the government, is 162 trillion dinars, $135 billion, with a planned financial deficit of 48 trillion dinars, $40 billion, including 3 trillion dinars, $2.5 billion, 
to implement the agreed projects with China, and the government's delay in sending the draft budget in order to include the reform decisions that cost the country more than 10 trillion dinars, $8.3 billion. Iraqi economists have warned of the dangers of not approving this year's draft budget and ensuring Iraq into the recession in the coming period. The budget includes two operational and investment aspects, and delaying its approval means converting the budget into a payroll budget only and cancelling investment, and thus high unemployment, and the economic consequences that follow such as entering the country in an economic recession, especially in light of the low demand for oil. The main source of income in the country after the crisis of the spread of the coronavirus in China, on the other hand, it will stall development, and the agreement with China will not be implemented, due to the delay of the resigning government in sending the bill to parliament due to the high efficiency rate. A non-reassuring message for investors in postponing investment operations in large and medium-sized projects that are already stalled. It will also give a negative signal to investors in the private sector to start their investments. Failure to approve the budget will create economic stagnation, and if it continues for more than six months, it will inevitably lead to recession, which means that economic losses will widen to dangerous social joints. The risk of recession and its repercussions on the economy and society is very large as public spending in Iraq constitutes about 45% of the gross domestic product, and that this spending and its high composition through an annual planned budget have wide positive effects on achieving the real planned growth rates in the national product itself and in particular using the main production forces. The most dangerous is severe unemployment, i.e., an increase in the number of unemployed youth of working age who are able to work and find no work. These are the dangers in destroying societies and the low rates of growth, all of which are factors that may lead to further collapse, as the number of the population of Iraq is more than 30 million, and it is expected that their number will reach 50 million within a decade, as more than 60% of Iraqis are under the age of 24 years, and 700,000 citizens need jobs every year. Stumbled or planned investment spending will lead to an increase in poverty rates due to the annual growth of the population and the workforce looking to work and do not find it, and thus will interfere with many inter-related independent interests on investment spending, especially the new government, which ultimately leads to problems paralyzing the economy and stopping the wheel of investment growth. The new government and the challenges of reform, can the Iraqis be optimistic about the new government? By achieving radical reforms, the government must be strong enough to advance the bitter reality, the ability to control the sources of corruption, and mobilize an elite group of Iraqi officials that respect state institutions and commit to reform and pledge what they can fulfill, to reach the desired goals, directing the country's money and wealth away from the hotbeds of corruption, and towards recovery and reconstruction, as it needs to invest in major infrastructure improvements especially energy and transportation, in order for the economy to grow. The development of the private sector should be encouraged without destabilizing the state-owned enterprises, which are the largest source of job opportunities in Iraq, as it suffers from poor performance, to meet the needs of the population. And the crisis of declining water resources in Iraq to 30% since the 80s of the last century must take into account the fact that it threatens the whole life in Iraq, where the water supply faces a decrease that will reach 60% by 2025, which has dire effects on food and electricity production. And the absence of factors of stability, security, transparency, and strong will, which are necessary preconditions for preparing and implementing any program capable of pushing the Iraqi economy forward, and as it is known, the Iraqi economy depends, to a large extent, on oil, which provides about 90% of government revenue, but takes place allocating 70% of the budget to pay the wages of public sector employees who are less productive. The World Bank has estimated that productivity for every Iraqi employee is embarrassing and very low and reaches 17 minutes a day. As for the Iraqi educational system, too, is suffering from a lack of funding, as the education, construction and health sectors get only about 8% of the budget, and millions of Iraqi children do not go to school and instead go to permanent unemployment.
the bulk of wealth in the Iraqi border outlets must be controlled, and the imports of the outlets must be controlled, where officials asserted that their imports amount to more than 15 trillion Iraqi dinars annually, which is a large amount. But the problem that arises in this sensitive issue is that up to the sum of these imports not exceeding 1 trillion dinars only, and this means the largest percentage of these imports leaking into the enclaves of militias, gangs, and political forces that control and manage them. And if the government holds this file and manages it properly, it will provide financial revenues that can be invested in solving the problems of society. Conclusion the dialogue remains open to several questions about the possibility of the new government and reform, in light of the continuing unrest and the method used in managing crises, where Iraq needs a man to pull the socio-political and economic reality from the bottom of deterioration and corruption, to build it again. Next article of interest. Iraq's solder threatens, million-man march if parliament does not vote on new cabinet. Senior Iraqi cleric and politician Muqtada al-Sadr on Saturday called for a million-man demonstration in the national capital if parliament did not hold a session to vote on the proposed cabinet of Prime Minister-designate Mohammad Alawi. Sadr's warning comes after parliamentary speaker Mohammad al-Habousi said that an extraordinary session on the issue would not take place unless Alawi sent the names of cabinet ministers and his program to parliament for review. This comes amid government formation disputes between Shia political leaders on the one side and the Kurdish and Sunni leadership on the other. Alawi has reportedly said that he would send his proposed cabinet to the legislature just ahead of a vote he asked to be held on Monday. We look forward to the parliamentary session to vote on a ministerial cabinet free of quotas so that its first task is to set the date and provide the atmosphere for early and fair elections in accordance with the aspirations of the people, prosecute the corrupt, killers of peaceful demonstrators, protect peaceful revolutionaries, as well as work for the sovereignty of Iraq, Sadr said in a statement. He added, if the session does not take place this week, or if it was held and an impartial Iraqi cabinet was not voted on, then this necessitates a million-man popular demonstration, and then turning it into sit-ins around the green zone. Sadr arrived in the Iraqi city of Najaf Saturday, leaving Iran's calm following an apparent outbreak of the novel coronavirus that has killed at least five people so far, according to local reports. An influential figure with the ability to rally hundreds of thousands of Iraqis behind him, Sadr was the most vocal supporter of Alawi, who was nominated to take the embattled country's premiership in early February after the outgoing PM, Adil Abdul Mahdi, stepped down in early December. After announcing his backing of Alawi, Sadr also ordered his militias to clamp down on anti government protesters he had claimed to be supporting just days earlier. According to the media, human rights organizations, the UN, and protesters themselves, militia members have shot demonstrators and activists with sniper rifles and carried out targeted assassinations against those who have taken to the streets to demand a higher standard of living, increased employment opportunities, and an end to rampant governmental corruption. Next article of interest. Hassan al kabi announces next Wednesday a session to give confidence to Alawi's government. First Deputy Speaker of Parliament Hassan al kabi announced on Sunday that he will hold a parliament session to give confidence to the government of Prime Minister-designate Mohammad Tafiq Alawi next Wednesday. al kabi said in a brief statement received to Shafak News, that the session of the House of Representatives to give confidence to the Alawi government will be held next Wednesday. The session was supposed to be held tomorrow, Monday, at the invitation of the resigned Prime Minister, Adel Abdul Mahdi. However, Speaker of Parliament Mohammad al Habousi said that the date of the session cannot be determined unless the government program and the curriculum vitae of ministerial candidates arrive. Alawi was named after a consensus between the leader of the Alliance of the Hadi al-Amiri and the leader of the Sadrist movement Muqtada al-Sadr. However, he faces widespread objections from the Kurdish and Sunni political forces as well as the popular movement, which demands an independent personality far from subordination to the parties and abroad.
hit the like and subscribe button to be alerted as more articles of interest are posted. Check out the Denarian blog, Facebook and Twitter for all of today's articles of interest. Pick up your free trial copy of the newly upgraded Currency Exchange Planner and check out the new Currency Exchange Planner companion before you leave. Use the promo code, the Denarian, and get 25% off at checkout when you decide to unleash the full planner's abilities, along with the mobile application added free for being my subscriber. Register today as an affiliate with the Gold Savings Carrot Bar program. If you do not keep your savings in a real asset like gold, you risk everything as the fiat system fails and they boot up the new quantum financial system on the blockchain. Protect your family's wealth today in physical gold, as tomorrow may be too late. The program is made so everyone can afford to save in gold, by offering it one gram at a time. Start saving in a real true asset like gold, it's free to register and secure your family's savings tomorrow. Why do you think all the central banks are loading up on gold lately, and running from the current depreciating fiat US dollar? Do you think they do not know what is coming? Get yourself protected. Both of the links to these invaluable programs are available in the description box below this video. Go check them out. Knowledge is power. Using that newfound knowledge is powerful. Over and out, for now, the Denarian.